The word the Lord gave me this morning is be like a tree Hallelujah. planted yeah. by rivers of water. Yeah. Be, this is what you're supposed to be. Be like a tree <laughs> planted by rivers of water. If you'll turn with me to Psalms number one. Psalms number one. The kids can be dismissed. Psalms number one. We're going to go through all six verses this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that walketh not. Say not. Not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the way of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, his pleasure, his value is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate what? Day and night. Day and night. And you know, I'm going to stop right there for a moment. You know, as a, as a new wife and a and a mom to a newborn, and a stepmom, and a business owner, and many different things, I find myself wearing many different hats and being very busy. And as I began to read through this scripture, I remember when I first got saved, and Naya was singing a couple songs here that we used to sing when I first got saved, and I mean, I was so hungry for God, Pastor Matt. Like, I just wanted to know everything about the scripture. I wanted to know everything about God. I was just so hungry. And I couldn't wait to get up in the morning. I couldn't wait to see his presence. And as we grow in the Lord, and as we are living for him longer and longer, I don't know why, but Pastor Matt, it seems to kind of get set on the back burner at times. Amen. It, it does. Amen. And, and I, when I was praying, I really felt the need to pray, God, rekindle yes. that. Right. Rekindle that. Make it like we're born again all over again. Yes. Make it that, that desperateness for the word of God be in our hearts again. Because he said that a blessed man is a man or woman that meditates, ponders, thinks about, sits with the scripture day and night. Hallelujah. Day and night. And how many of us find ourselves busy up here? Yes. Right. Okay? You can sit on the couch and not be busy in action, but be really yes. busy up here that's right or really busy in here mm -hmm. and the scripture is telling me that his delight his pleasure is in the law of the lord and he meditates on it day and night and he this person shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that river of water is the spirit of yeah. god yeah. moving in your life I need the Spirit of God to move in my life. I need the Spirit of God to refresh me and renew me yes. and restore my mind and my thoughts yes. and my thinking. Look, just because you get saved doesn't mean that that's the end all and that's it. That's right. Pastor Matt was talking about this morning. There's a growth. Yeah. There's a maturity. In, in, in three months from now, Selah's moving on from a bottle to she's going to start eating fruits and vegetables and baby food. And then she's going to be moving on to whole food. Right. And we're going to be moving. The Lord does not want us to stay in the baby Preach zone. It, sister. And I'm telling you, we can actually be growing and then go back yes. to the baby zone. Come on. And the Lord doesn't want that for us because he wants you to make disciples of people. Yes. He wants you to grow so when the babies of Christ come in, you can now pour into them. Pastor Matt can't do it all. I can't do it all. The worship team can't do it all. Rob can't do it all. We can't do it all. We need you. Amen. And we can't reach the people and the sphere that you go to. Come on. 
Come on. So we got to grow up. Yes. Amen. It's time to grow up in Christ. Amen. Youth, we got to grow up Come too. On. It's time to grow up. Y'all are getting something. I remember speaking to the ladies. I did a ladies retreat but of the youth where in Mississippi. And I was talking to them, Pastor Matt, and they knew about the word of God. And I just began to weep because when I was their age, I never got that. I never, the stuff that they knew, I was like, wow. Like if I could have had that when I was their age, I probably wouldn't have went in all the direction that I had went. And, and probably wouldn't have went through all the pain that I had went through. But listen to me. Y'all are sitting in here getting the truth of the word of God. Bree, Gabby, and all of you. Because God wants to do something with you and in you. Yeah. It's not just for Sabrina to be a tree planted by the water. This is for you, Elijah, to be a tree yes. planted by the water. This is for you to be a tree planted by the water. So the spirit of God can move through you in your schools and where you go and raise you up. He's not just saying to Pastor Matt, Pastor Matt meditate on the scripture day and night. He's saying, Chase, you meditate on the scripture day and night. It's a constant thing from young to old. It doesn't matter. He's not a respecter of persons. Thank you, Lord. And he said, this person who is a tree planted by the water that bringeth forth fruit in his season, his leaf, it shall not wither. You're not going to dry up. You ever feel dry before, empty before? He said, if you're planted by the water, you're not going to dry up. You're not going to wither. The sun might be beating on you. It might be hot at times. But there's an irrigation system of the Holy Spirit in your life that's going to continue to water you and keep you moving forward in faith. Yes. But if you go plant yourself somewhere else that's not by the water, you're going to dry up. You're going to wither. You're going to break. We have a tree in our backyard. Every time I turn around, there's limbs falling off. I'm like, something's wrong with that tree. And thank God it's not falling on my house. Amen. Amen. But that's like us. We don't want to see begin to break under the pressure of the trial. If you break, break before the Lord. Yes. And let the Spirit of God put you back together, I guess. Hallelujah. And it'll put you back together better than you've ever been put together before. And what he does in your heart is going to be an eternal work. It's not going to be something that's going to wither away. It's going to be something that keeps you level, that keeps you on the straight and narrow, that keeps you moving forward. It's going to be something that gives you peace, that surpasses all understanding. Yes. He said, in fruit in his season. Wait yes, for your yes. season. Right. You, there's a work that's going on. If I sit there and, and I plant a tree and I stare to see if the fruit is growing, I'm going to be sitting there for an awfully long time yes. staring at a tree that don't look like it's doing anything. Come on. How many times have we seen in our lives, Lord, I don't see it. God, I don't see it. Lord, I don't see it. I'm not seeing it. But if you keep believing and you keep trusting and you keep watering and you keep standing and you keep planting and you keep allowing God to do the work in you, one day there's going to be an apple. One day there's going to be fruit. One day, one day you're going to see the reward of what you've been believing for. One day, that, that word fruit. Now, when I think of fruit, I always think of the fruit of the Spirit, right? As soon as I see fruit, I think Spirit, fruit of the Spirit. But this word in the Hebrew meant reward. And some of us have been praying for things for an awfully long time. That's right. And what this is saying is if you're a tree planted by the river of water, that is it constantly keeps growing you, that you are going to see the reward of the fruit of your labor. You're going to see the reward. You're going to see your children come back to the Lord. You're going to see that job change. You're going to see your marriage change. You're going to see your heart change 
change. You're going to see things restored. You're going to see it. But you, if you uproot your tree and go plant it somewhere else, you're not going to see what God wants to do in your life. Listen to this. And he said, whatsoever he does shall prosper. Hallelujah. That means that it will advance. That means whatever the person that is planted in Christ by the river is going to succeed. It's going to grow. Naya said to me the other day. So I'll tell you this little story real quick. The Lord told me to put my job at the funeral home. And I have, I'm a personal trainer, and I work at the funeral home, and I travel and minister. But I have never done just training. I've always had a secondary income somewhere, something that's stable. Because training, it's a hit or miss. Like, that's all on me. That's all my business. And I've either worked for the church and trained, or now I'm out there in the funeral home and trained. And now the Lord is saying, I've been praying about my daughter and about my husband's children and how to function our family and grow and what we should do next and how I should move things. And the Lord spoke to me about two, three weeks ago and in worship in church and said, quit your job. Amen. And immediately fear came up. I was like, whoa, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> uh, that's my that's my livelihood here we're talking about lord and when you look at the numbers i'm talking real talk here okay we're, we're christians living in a real world Amen. and we're trying to hear the voice of god yeah. and we're wanting to go in the direction of god and i hear the voice of the lord say quit your job i'm like that can't be the lord <laughs> <laughs> that is the devil that's right that can't be the Lord. But see, I've been in my prayer closet wanting to be home with my baby more and wanting to take care of my house more. Now, let me tell y'all, I am a working bee. Like, I like to work. Okay, I run with Pastor Matt. I like to work. And I always said, I'm not going to want to be home. I'm not going I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not to be one of those moms that want to be home. And listen, when I seen that little girl, that's it. Okay? God birthed something new in me. And But it's not that I want to be home and just sit on the couch eating bonbons. I want to be home pouring into my children. I want when I pick Jeff's kids up from school to pour into them. Yes. I want to be home taking care of the house and putting things together. And then I'll train as well. And I've been praying that. And now I'm sitting in prayer and the Lord says, quit your job. <laughs> and I'm like, that's a little risky. <laughs> Lord. And, and, I heard someone say that I work at a funeral home. All of them are like in ministry or pastors. And he came to me and he said, well, without risk, there's no reward. Mm, that's good. And, what, and faith is a risk. Amen. God is always calling us to a place where we have to just trust that's him right. blindly. That's right. And so I said, okay, Lord, well, if you want me to do that, you're going to have to set that up because I don't know what that looks like. I, <laughs> do I walk in and say I'm done? I mean, I know that that's not right. You know, you give your two weeks notice. Well, somebody else was quitting. So I was like, oh, Lord, I don't know, God. I mean, I mean, he's quitting. So, like, do I quit too? Like, this is going to put him in a place, you know? So... I'll let that go by two, three, two, now it's been three weeks from now, and I, I, I trained both my boss and his wife, and his wife said something to me, and I took it, I heard the door open, you know, and I was like, well, might as well tell her what I feel like the Lord told me. So I tell her, and she says, and I'm saying all this to say, whatever we do, if God is telling you to do it, is going to prosper. Oh, it's, right. Right. it's going to. It's not that it might. No, it's going to prosper. Yes. And as we tend to it. So I say, let's say, Naya, I'm driving. And, and Naya goes, you know what I learned? I said, what did you learn, girl? She said, everything we touch 
If the Lord said it, it's going to prosper. So I'm like, okay, Lord, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. So I talk to him, my boss's wife, and I tell her about what I feel like the Lord told me. And now that we all go to church together so I can speak to her that way, like God spoke to me. I mean, I don't know if you can go to a normal boss and say that kind of stuff, too. But I, and I said, the Lord told me to, to quit and that I need to be trained. And she goes, oh, we already knew that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, this is going to be easier than I thought it was. <laughs> But is it easier? Because I start, I mean, look, the anxiety of, like, thinking everything is going to rely now on my business. It's a whole nother level of growth. And I know you know what I'm talking about, Rob. And a whole nother level of pressure and a whole nother level of trusting God yes. in your business. Yes. Like, yes. and so I'm like, but I have to, I have to take the word at what it says. I mean, if I'm a woman who plants my tree by the river of living water and I'm meditating on the scripture day and night and I have a desire for God to lead and direct me, the word says that everything that I do shall prosper, right? It shall advance. It shall. Now, and I even said it might not look like what I think it's going to look like. That's right. What if God decides, okay, Angela, you got as many clients as I think that you need because I want you doing what you said you wanted to do. So I'm going to bless your husband instead so that he can bring home what will cover. It might not look the way that I think it's going to look because Angela's got to do it, right? That's right. That's right. Maybe he's going to do it from somewhere else that I just don't know. Maybe he's going to open another door. I don't understand. But I got I to gotta be willing to walk out and say, okay, I'm going to trust you in this. And you know what happened? That day that I settled it in my heart and said, okay, I guess we're going to go this direction, Lord. And somebody <laughs> called me and said, look, I can't come train with you anymore. I got X, Y, and Z to do. And that's just like the devil. That's right. And I'm just like, oh. And, and immediately, you know, immediately the fear comes up in your heart. And you're like, oh, what am I going to do now? And I immediately said, you know what? No. God, you spoke it. You said it. Now you even confirmed it about two or three different times. And I've got to trust that you are going to provide for me. No matter what the provision looks like, I've got to trust that you're going to do that. And it said, verse 4, the ungodly are not so. Ungodly are those that just don't believe the right. Lord, and they're not living for him. They are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation, the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. He's acquainted with the, with the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. This is, a, I mean, this is hard to swallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love the way that Pastor Matt said, I want to be up here with a critical spirit. I don't want you to think that I'm being critical. I'm just going to preach you the word of yes. God. Yes. And, and the reason why the word is so important is because it challenges us and it changes us. Yes. And, and it says that it pierces between the soul and yes. the spirit and the joint and the marrow. Yes. I mean, we're talking about a deep work that he wants to do in the heart of the believer. He doesn't want to leave you stagnant. He That's doesn't right. want to leave you in that place. He's saying, all right, look, you, you've gone very far and you've grown this much, but I want you to grow just a little bit more. Yes. I want you to come on just a little bit more. I want you, Angela, to quit your job and grow in faith just a little bit more so I can show you my glory. I can show you. I want you to, Sabrina, not to take that medicine because I want to show you my glory. I want to show you what.
what I can do. I want you teenagers to trust me and believe me for your friendships and your circles yeah, of influence yeah. because I want to show you my glory. I want to change you. I want you to trust me, Michael, with your son. I want you to trust me because I want to show you my glory. Yes, hallelujah. Rob says it all the time, even about his business. I'm just going to trust him with my business. I'm going to trust him and I'm going to believe him because yes. God's going to show me his glory. Yes. So today, there's two in this psalm, we see this. I want to ask you this question. I ask myself this question. What do I want my life to look like? And what do I want to be? Who do I want to be? Look, and that's a constant question. I mean, who do I want to be as a teenager? What do I want my character to look like? Yeah. Who do I want to be as a mother? Who do I want to be as an adult? Who do I want to be as as a um, worker or as an employee? Who do I want to be as a business owner? Who do I want to be as a pastor? What do I want my, my life to look like? And what do I want my character to look like? Amen. And I think that's a constant check. Like, and uh, even a friend. What do? I, how, what kind of friend do I want to be? What do I want that to look like? Am I a gossiping friend or am I a praying friend? Come on, Preach. Sis. Preach. Am, am I a leader or am I a follower? Mm. Amen. Do I run time on the clock at work uh -oh. and steal time from my boss, or do I work? unto the Lord and give him all that he's worthy of. Yes, yes, yes. Preach. Do I want to be a nagging wife or an encouraging wife? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Just saying. Amen. Do I want to be good with my finances? Yes. yes. Or do I want to be spending like it's water? Uh -oh. Oh, Lord. Yes. Okay. What do I want to be? Who do I want to be? How do I want to be? How, how when I walk in the room, do I want people to walk out the other door? Uh -oh. Because I'm negative and complaining all the time? Oh, or do I want to, somebody say, Angela's here. Yeah. Amen. We're going to yeah. touch heaven today. Yeah. That's what I want. <laughs> and not because of me, but because of Jesus in That's me. Right. That's right. Yeah. Look, I want to spend some money too. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I want new clothes and new shoes and new this and new that. But you know what? My children need it now too. That's and right. you know what? I, I, this the enemy plays on this. I'll be like, well, they learn your kids. Mm. But yes, oh. they are. Yes, the they Lord are. gave them kids to me. I might have not have birthed those kids, but the Lord put them in my sphere of influence. So now I need to take care of them like they are mine. That's right. That's right. I tell you what, being a mom and a stepmama and a wife is a whole nother level of servitude. Come on. Yeah. Uh huh. And watch your attitude while you're serving. Yes. I heard somebody say this I don't have to, I get to. Mm. And that actually is very, very convicting to me because when I'm doing the dishes, Everybody else is doing whatever they're doing. <laughs> I have to be like, I don't have to. <laughs> I get to. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? Who do you want to be? How do you want to be? I don't have to. I get to help my wife. Ooh. <laughs> Husbands too. I don't have to. I get to serve my boss. Hallelujah. There's two different paths. That's the right. right path and the wrong path. 
right. There's no gray path. That's right. Come on. There's the right path and the wrong path. Amen. You can take two different ways of your life. Two different ways you can walk. Two different lives and two different directions. That word directions means a course that you move along. The way you manage your life. The guidance of your life. And what is governing over your life. Amen. What direction do you want to take? Who's governing your life? Jesus. Is Jesus governing your life? Or are you governing Come your on, life? Come on, sister. Is Jesus over your life? Yes. Or is the enemy taking That's root right. in your life? And moving you in the wrong direction? Because there's two different people That's in this right. psalm, Pastor Matt. Come on. There's the ungodly and the sinner. And then there's the righteous. And just because you get saved and God comes and takes you and places you in Christ and makes you right with God doesn't mean that we're always living for God. That's right. And how do I know that? Because this psalm is written by David to the children of Israel. Come on. It's written to God's people. That's right. That's right. And he's saying, look, David, of all people, is saying, look, there's two different paths you can take. Because David tasted of both paths. Come on. In his walk with God. Yes. Right. He tasted of both. And it said, look, there's the way of the righteous. Those are the right standing with God and want to be in continual right standing with God. And then there are those that are of the sinners. One that is not born again. One that is in not right standing with God. One that has no regard. They don't think on it. They don't pay attention to it. They don't consider it with protective care. Anything about the things of God or the word of God. Help us, Lord. We should be someone that has regard for the things of God. I like that word regard. Because that meant that you protect it with care. Are we protecting our walk with God with care? As much as you take care of yourself, take a shower, eat, you ain't going to miss a meal, right? And you take care of yourself. Are we taking care of our walk with God? Are we missing a meal? Help us, Lord. Preach. I'm talking about the word meal. Yeah, that's good. Are we missing it? The importance of ordering your life after the word of God and the result that that what it will yield. See, David stresses this subject in this psalm. This is the first psalm of the book. And this is the subject matter. There's two different ways. There's two different directions. And I'm telling you that the blessed man takes value in the word of God and applies it to his life. And this man will be successful. You ever ask yourself, why am I not successful? Well, what does success look like to you? Is six is six because success to me is watching victory come in my household. Success to me might not necessarily be in the natural and success what uh, movie stars think and power and money and respect, but success is watching my children sing songs in the shower about Jesus. Okay, that's success to me. When I hear McCartney singing, he's a chain breaker in the shower to Jesus. That's what success looks like to me. But it wasn't always like that. We need a change of mindset. We need a change of thinking. God, what is? what do I want to be? What do I want my life to look like? Who am I allowing to govern my life? So David stresses this subject in the beginning. I think a man's opening remarks are super important. Amen. He's setting the tone and the precedent for the rest of the book. Yes. Yeah. And he's saying, look, choose this day who you will serve. That's it. You ever... Back in the day, or, or before you met your wife, or if you're going freshly dating still, and I mean, you y'all put your best forward, right? Best first day of school, you wear your best outfit. Yeah, yeah. You put your best forward. Well, I think that David was opening with this because it was his best remarks. 
He's like, look, this is what I'm going to set the tone with because this is what I want to follow with through the rest of the Psalms. Because who are you going to worship? The Psalms is a book of worship. Yes. Who are you going to worship this morning? Now I, now I sang that song, I will serve no foreign gods. And I was like, yes, that's, that goes along with my message because I will serve no other treasure. Yes. And let's let's see what this what it talks about. It says, "Blessed is the man that walketh not." Yes. Say not. 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 You walk means that you are going in that direction. Walk not in the counsel. You do not get advice or a plan of action for your life from the ungodly. That which is morally wrong, that which God says is condemned or guilty, if God says it's not good, there's no way for you to make it good. That's right. That's right. That's right. If God says don't do it, there's no way for you to justify that it's right to do. That's right. He says thou shalt not lie. Come on. Preach. There's no way for you to justify Correct. lying. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Right. If God says, thou shalt not commit adultery or look and lust after anyone else, there's no way for you to make that right and justify it. Well, he don't pay me no mind. Mm. She, she nags me all the time. Come on, sister. Well, get on your knees yes. and ask the Lord Hallelujah. to touch your marriage and to touch yes. your home. Your heart. Touch your heart. Change you. Yes. Because then you can respond a little bit differently. Yes. Yes. Well, I got to, I'm sorry, Selah, mommy's loud. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to ungodly counsel 
and advice. When the serpent said to her, you shall not surely die, she took it as truth and took advice from the enemy. Not ordering her life after what God had spoken because right. she knew what God had spoken because she said, God said, I shall not blank, blank, blank. And she did it anyway. Mm. And then what happened? Sin entered into the world. There was a separation from her and God and from the presence of God. That's what, when we heed ungodly counsel and advice, yeah. it will separate you from the presence and the power of God, and sin will begin to move in your life, not the presence and power of God. Help us. And it says this, nor standeth in the, in the way of sinners. So I'm walking, now I'm standing. That word stand means abide, remain. This is where I planted myself. I've chosen to go in the wrong direction. Heed wrong advice. You could even get wrong advice from yourself. <laughs> Preach. Preach. Because my heart is deceitfully wicked, the Bible says, right. above all things. Right. Yep. So sometimes our own thoughts will deceive us. Amen. And we have to trust the Lord and believe the Lord at his word. Well, if I don't know what the word says and I haven't gotten into the word, then I don't know what Jesus says. So I need to get into the word because this says after you go in the wrong direction, now you begin to abide there. You begin to remain there. Have you ever done something wrong and then you keep doing that same thing wrong and then it starts getting normal? Yeah. Yeah. Starts feeling normal to you? Yeah. Oh, well, that was just one lie, two lies, three lies. Oh, uh, well, I was just, I was just taking time off the clock doing this, that, or the other at my job, so that's okay. It's normal. Everybody does it. Mm. Everybody goes to parties. Come on. Everybody does it. And the first time you feel convicted, and the second time you feel convicted, but now everybody yells at their husband. Come on, sis. Everybody... Can't get up with the Lord early in the morning Help us, Lord. or sit at the, with the Lord late at night. I don't know. I mean, church on Sunday is good, right? I don't need to read his word the rest of the week. And it starts to become normal. And you start to stand in that spot rather than advancing in what God has for you. Look. If I used to read my Bible every morning when I first got saved because I wanted to know what he said, I should be reading my Bible still every morning. If I can't do it in the morning, then I need to be doing it at night. I need to do it sometime. I don't care if you put it on audio. Come on. Naya is the queen of the audio Bible. Hallelujah. <laughs> she is. Amen. It doesn't matter how you get it. Just get it. Yes. Get it when you're driving in your work car, in your work truck. Get it when you're when you're driving in your car. Get it in the shower. I don't care where you get it. Get it. Just get it. Yeah. Yeah. Not like Nike. Just do it. <laughs> do what you gotta do to get what you need from God. To hear the voice of God. If Naya spoke to me in a dark room, I would know her voice because she's my best friend. Because I've spent a lot of time with her. Amen. And I would know Danielle's oh, voice too, because it's it's very you can you can hear that voice. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all might know Danielle's voice too. <laughs> but why? Because she's been coming and spending time here. Yeah. And y'all been hearing her. And that's the same thing with the voice of God. Oh, yeah. If you spend time with yeah. him, if you begin to know what he's saying, if you begin, you'll begin to start hearing him. Yeah. And why am I saying that? Why is it so important to hear the voice of God? Because you need to know what to do. That's right. You need to know where to go. You need to know if there's a hole and you're about to fall in it. And the Holy Spirit says, stop right there. And then, you, then so you don't fall in the hole that's in front of you. If he begins to tell you that's not for you, turn that off, turn that junk off that TV, yeah. Yeah. get rid of that, get rid yeah. of that, stop yeah. looking at this, it's yeah. hurting your world, yes. oh, yes. stop oh, acting yeah. like that, you don't gotta act like that no more, stop walking in that direction, stop acting so hard, you don't have 
like me and Pastor Matt, little bulldogs. <laughs> <Y'all are laughs> yes. People take us very aggressively. <laughs> but I don't feel like either of us are trying to be aggressive. But God will begin to change yeah. us and get and change. But God will even change your tone of voice towards people. Sweet 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 he will. My husband, he is like the sweetest thing. Like when he talks to people, it's one of his gifts. He's just easily, yes. you can entreat him easily. He likes to exhort people and lift them up. I mean, the first time, if he goes to introduce you, he'll tell the person he's introducing, like, your whole life story. Oh my uh, but, but, like, in a good way. Like, they are the most awesome worship leader, and that, and he'll lift you up and exhort you yeah. and in front of other people. And I've never met anybody really like that. And to me, I'm convicted by that. Because I'm like, I don't do that for people. I need to start doing that for people. Because it makes the other person feel good about themselves. And he draws out the good things about that person and highlights them in front of other people. So that that person is exalted and feels good about themselves. It's like, yeah, okay, I can keep going. And God, that's what God wants to change us. Yeah. He'll even show you things about somebody else. Oh, I'll tell you this. When Naya and I used to live together, and I, look, there were some times I was going in the wrong direction. I know. It's hard to believe. (laughs) (laughs) But I would show up, and Naya would be, I'd walk in the front door, it'd be like, 1 o'clock in the morning. That's none of your business what I was doing. <laughs> I'd walk in and now I'd be sitting on the piano. <laughs> I swear it, and, and as soon as you walk in the door, the presence of God would hit you. <laughs> and she'd be like, hallelujah. And it was genuine. And sometimes I'd be like, she's, she's timing that thing out. I know she's sitting there every time. She'd really, because look, I was choosing to go in a different direction because I like this guy, whatever. Okay? <laughs> and he was not for me. <laughs> and if it's too late and too dark, you don't need it. Amen. <laughs> Teenagers. That's right. Too late, too dark, get home. Yes. That's right. Nothing good happens after 10 o'clock. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Are you going to have Naya playing on the piano? (laughs) But Naya was fulfilling her heart with the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. And I'm over here trying to test the waters. Help. Look, I know it's so hard to believe. (laughs) But every time I'd walk in, the Spirit of God would minister to me and be like, that's what you're supposed to do. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I'd be like, oh, Lord, (laughs) help me. And then I'd get mad at her. She never knew it. But I would get mad inside. Yeah. Because I'd be like, man, she's doing what she's supposed to do. And this thing's got a grip on me. And God, I'm 30-something years old. And I ain't even got a husband. And look, Lord. And that's how I would be. And she'd be, hmm. (laughs) And the peace of God. And, but what ha- would happen was I'd be convicted and I had a choice. Mm-hmm. That's right. would I, was I going to continue to be governed by my own desires? Oh, help us. Yes. And wants? Yes. And not trust in the Lord? Amen. And thank God I trusted the Amen. Lord and have the husband that I have now. Because I look back on some of that and I'm like, oh my Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. Where would I be? Yes. But the presence of God would minister to me and I had a choice at that moment. Was I going to continue to be governed or was I going to allow the Holy Spirit to govern my life? Was I going to walk in the ungodly counsel of my own heart or was I going to allow the water of the Spirit of God that was now flowing through Naya's life when I walked in to draw me to a deeper walk for myself? 
Sometimes when you come in this house and you feel the presence of God and you don't understand it, or it could even frustrate you to a degree because you know maybe you're struggling with something. God wasn't intimidated with my struggle. He wanted to set me free. Yeah. His conviction upon my life wasn't to, to hurt me or harm me. It was to draw me closer to him. Why? Because he wanted to give me a life that would prosper and grow. He wanted to give me a life that I'd be able to be more than I could ever ask or believe. He wanted to give me a life that was better, but I couldn't see it at the time because I was standing in the wrong place. You hear what I'm saying? I was standing in the way of sinners. Yes. I, ch I chose to plant myself there. The Bible says this in Romans 8, 6. For the carnal, the carnally minded is death, but the spiritually minded is life and peace. The carnal mind is that which is one of the flesh that is not of God, that relies on human impulses and whims. That's the carnal mind. The carnal mind is filled with ungodly desires. I mean, even as a believer, look, you're going to have desires that pop up in your heart and mind that are not of God. Yeah. And you need to crucify those desires. That means put to death those desires and say, no, I am dead to that thing and I am risen with Christ and I don't need to go in that direction. I don't need to say that thing. I don't need to watch that again. I don't need to listen to that again. I don't need to steal that again. I don't need to lie again. I learned from that thing. Now I'm going to be honest. Now I'm going to be a woman of integrity and trustworthy. Now I'm going to learn and grow. God doesn't do things because he just wants to throw you out. He does things because he wants you to learn and grow. Yes. And he says, because the carnal mind is enmity. That means that whatever is not of God is, is of opposition or hostilely against the Lord. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it be. The carnal mind can be subject, yielded to the things of God. Yes. Our spirit man yields to the things of God. That's why I'm not who I was 13 years ago. I'm not running to a needle no more. I'm not running to the street no more. I'm not running to the joint no more. I'm not running to men no more. I'm not running to cheating no more. I'm not running to those things anymore because my mind has been changed. Yes. My mind has been changed, even to the degree where I want to honor my father and mother. I'm talking about my character with people. Yeah. I want to treat people good now. Yes. Yes. I mean, because I was nasty. My mom will tell you I was cold and nasty. Mm. I was mean towards people. And now I just want to enjoy and treat and be with people. Thank you, Jesus. God will change that in you. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you, Lord. If you think about the life of Samson, he was dedicated solely to the Lord as a Nazarite. Think about this. Samson took a vow that he would abstain from any wine or fermented drink, that he would not cut his hair, that he would not touch an unclean body. And But he began to heed the counsel of Delilah. He began to heed the counsel of his own desires and walk in a different direction. And we find Samson touching dead bodies. We find Samson drinking wine. We find Samson even to the point where he got tricked and Delilah cut his hair and took his strength. And now he is planted in the way of sinners. And he is blinded by his own sin. There is times that we start beginning to walk in another direction, and the longer we walk in that way, the, the, your strength is stolen and stolen and stolen and stolen, and all of a sudden you're blinded to that this direction is even wrong. That's right. And it wasn't until Samson repented 
and change direction yes. and ask the Lord for forgiveness that his strength was restored and the Philistines were destroyed. The Lord wants to destroy every enemy in your life. Everything that is trying to rob you of your strength and rob you of your peace and rob you of your joy. He wants you to have eyes of the spirit, not be blinded by the enemy. He doesn't want you to be blinded to what's right and wrong. He wants to make it clear. Yes. He doesn't want you to be planted in the way of sinners as a child of God. Yeah. And then we see this, the progression is sitting in the seat of the scornful. To sit means now I'm not, not just walking in that direction. Now I'm not just planted in that direction. Now I'm becoming one with it. Wow. Now I'm married to it. Mm. Now I have become so tolerant to the wrong things that now I'm making it well with my soul that this is the way that I'm going. Now I'm sitting in it. I'm settled in it. Now I'm establishing my habitation. I'm going to habitate in this. Help us. Oh God, help us. Yes. Help us to see when we're taking ungodly advice yes. and it's setting course for our life. Help us when we're standing and we're planted in the wrong spot. Even in, I'm talking about in here and yes. in here. Yes. Look, you could be sitting in this church. Right. You could be singing worship songs. Right. You could be playing your ties. You could be going to prayer. And you're still planted in the wrong spot in your heart. Yes. Right. Right. And God said, look, the longer you stay there, the more you're going to become one with that thing and realize it's not right for you. And God is saying, look, this man is not a blessed man that chooses to go this way. Think about this. King David, anointed to be king, killed a lion, killed a bear, killed Goliath, killed 200 Philistines. At his weakest moment, he was found not in battle. He was found on a rooftop. And he was found wandering in his mind. How many times have we not exercised our faith and just been wandering in our mind, not meditating on the scripture day and night, and we get caught off guard in our weakness, and all he sees is Bathsheba sitting over there in the bathtub and says, that looks good. So now he's walking in the counsel of the ungodly mindset he's in. And then he calls her over. And now he plants himself with her in bed. So now he is walking in the way of sinners. He looks like a sinner. That's not who King D David was. This is a mistake that he made. But now he's looking like the world around him. He's not looking like the man of God that God wants him to become. And he plants himself in bed with her. And then, instead of repenting at that moment, he decides, hold on. I've got to cover this thing up. Now she's pregnant. Because guess what? Sin has results. That causes death. And he says, I'm going to, now I'm going to go kill his, her. Her husband, because I don't know what to do. So now he's becoming one with the sin. Oh, he's trying to cover it up. This is who it, the direction he's now going. And thank God for the man of God, Nathan, who stands up and says, The Lord has seen your yeah. sin. The, Lord, the Holy Spirit at this moment wants to show us where we need to change. We, talking about me, talking about Pastor Matt, talking about every single person in this church. Yeah. If you have walked in here and you think you don't need to change, then you are wrong right. and you need to change. Hallelujah. That yes. about yourself. Yes. Because yes. we all need to change. Yes. yes. He said, we're not going to be perfected until the day of his coming. Yeah. I don't know about you, but when Jesus comes back, I'm going. So we're still here, so we still need to change. Yes. Yeah. 
And that every day, this right here needs to be applied to our life. Yes. yes. And he says this. At the moment of repentance, I want to say this because sometimes we can be left with the heavy. And I don't want to leave you with the heavy because we shall rejoice. Yes. But the Lord said, Psalms 51.10 create in me oh, a clean heart. That means make me qualified. That word create means to qualify me in a clean heart, a right heart, a pure heart, O oh God. And renew, make new a right spirit within me. That was the cry of David's heart when he found himself walking in the counsel of the ungodly, standing in the way of sinners, and now sitting in the bed of the scornful he found himself there and this was the cry of the man's heart create and qualify me in your presence oh God make me right with you renew my spirit because it's been dirty God help me make me new cast me not away from your presence oh God and take not your holy spirit from me David was a man that knew the presence of God and he didn't want to be separated from the presence of God and that's what took place in a moment he was separated through a series of events and a progression of sin he was separated from the presence of God and he called out and said no qualify me again oh God take not thy holy spirit from me and he said cast me not away from thy presence Oh God. Oh, sweet. But his delight, it is important to order yourself after the Word of God. Delight in the Word of God. Take pleasure in the Word of God. Declare the value of the Word of God over your life. Ponder on it all the time. Take pleasure in it. And if you don't understand it, say, God, make your Word so valuable to me that I cannot go a day without it, oh God. This man should be blessed. And that man who applies the word of God to his life shall be like a tree planted by the water. The Bible says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes. You shall be filled up continuously. Just like turning on the faucet and letting it run. A constant flow of God's spirit. A river. Actually, let me say this. When you are planted, it's an action word. You're set in the ground to grow. Yeah. You're planted. It's not a stagnant word. It's a verb. That means it's an action word. That means you're continuously planted. You're continuously growing. That river is a channel or an irrigation system, a constant stream of his spirit that will cultivate your life that you receive by faith and grace. Faith and yes. grace. Faith in Christ and grace. Faith and grace. <clears throat> and this brings fruit. It brings the reward in what? In your season. Yeah. The Bible says, humble yourself. Oh, Lower yourself. Yeah. Submit yourself. Give yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he will exalt you, lift you up in what? In due season. Yeah. So that means that if you haven't seen it yet, what should I be doing? Submitting myself yes. under the yes. hand yes. of God. Hallelujah. God's hand is a big hand, yes. and it's a good hand, and it's the potter's hand yes. who is shaping the clay. So you keep coming under. You keep giving it to him. You keep yes. submitting yes. to him. You keep trusting him. Yes. You keep giving yourself over to him. You keep believing in him, and he will continuously work. And one day, he's going to exalt you in due season. He's He's going to lift you up. He's going to bring the reward. He's going to bring the vision to pass. He's going to show you. you one day, Pastor Matt, both your 
girls are going to walk in that door. One day, we're going to see the glory of God take place as we continue to submit ourselves in due season. You're going to see it. The ungodly, we're going to see results. Those are the results. The results are my leaf is not going to wither. I'm not going to become dry and brittle and break. I'm going to be strong and flourish and succeed and be profitable. But the results of the ungodly are like chaff. They're blown. That word driven means they're tossed to and fro. They're dispersed. I mean, the, those who do not know the Lord, there's no level. They're, it's all over the place. It's scattered. I'm trying to grab, grasping, and I can't hold anything on to anything. The ungodly are driven away like chaff, worthless. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand. And I want to say this. Those, they chose the way of the ungodly. Jesus' heart is that none, yeah. let me say this again, shall none perish. shall perish, yeah. that none will be driven away, right. that none will be tossed to and fro, right. that none shall perish, but all shall come to eternal yeah. life. But this psalm is about choice. Who do I want to be? Who do I want to govern my life? It says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. In the end, God's going to judge. Yes. Help us. You're going to stand before him. And the ungodly will not so. They will not go to be with the Lord. But you know what I began to think about? Y'all remember that scripture where it says, Lord, Lord, yeah. I prophesied in your name. Yeah. I gave tithes in your name. Mm -hmm. I did. I cast out demons in your name. And the Lord turns and says, I never knew you. Yeah. That gave me a reverential fear because that's talking about church folk. Yeah. That's talking about people in the church that are playing oh. church, Amen. that aren't wanting to walk in the ways yeah. of God. They're just wanting the sh to showboat oh, and do the sh Look, and you know what? Sometimes we could be oh. doing it and really not even realize that we're doing it. And that's why God sends people like me who sat with them to get this word to challenge us so we could see, am I that person? Oh. Am I that person that's just coming into the church house? I mean, I, the rest of my life does not look like how it looks on Sunday morning. I'm, I'm walking in the council of the ungodly. I'm actually probably planted with other sinners. My life looks more like them than it does what God's word said it should look like. Okay, or 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 am I am I settled down in some sin that I don't want to get rid of? God help me because I don't want you to come back and tell me that you never knew me. Now listen, that's not just by one mistake. Yeah. That's, so let me set you free. Yeah, but preach the truth. So. But God is saying, look, I want you to grow. Yeah. It's time to grow up. Yes. Church. It's time to be planted yeah. and not moved. Talks. When that ungodly counsel comes, you say, no, I know what my God said. Amen. No, I know what the word of God says. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what Oprah says. I don't care what social media says. I don't care what what influence influencers say I should be doing. I don't care what those at my school say that I should be doing. I know what the word of God says. I don't care even though I'm broke. 
broke and I need to figure out a way to get money. I'm not going to manipulate it. I'm not going to go back to the way things used to be. I, I'm going to trust the Lord and I'm going to be, believe him and I'm going to be planted and I'm not going back to the way that I used to be. Even though some hard situations have come and even Pastor Matt said maybe some family members have died or things aren't going the way that you think that they should be going and you could be doing something to make something happen but no I'm going to stand and I'm going to believe God and I'm going to trust him and I'm going to let his spirit move and I'm not going to try to do something in my own strength yeah. in the wrong way and call it right oh, I'm going to trust the Lord God's heart Naya if you would come Love your press. God's heart is this Second Peter, if y'all would stand with me, Second Peter 3 9. The Bible says this the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long suffering toward us, not willing that any shall perish, but that all shall come. To repentance. That, that word repentance means it's time to have a change of direction. It's time to have a change of heart. It's time to have a change of mind. And that word also means reversal. It's time to reverse what the enemy has been trying to drag you in another direction or our own desires. We're going to repent today and reverse that direction for us and our household. Amen. And the Bible says, John 3, 17, For God sent not his own son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Don't take this message as a message of condemnation and doom and gloom. And No, God said, I don't want to say that you're guilty. I want to save you and deliver you and change you and grow you and make you new. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want to give the opportunity this morning to say, God... There's some things in my heart and in my mind that I want to see you change. I'm not talking about change your partner. I'm not talking about change your children. Uh, this is an individual you and Jesus thing this morning. Amen. I'm talking about change me, oh God. Change my heart, oh God. God, I don't want to walk in any counsel that is not of you. God, I don't want to stand and be planted and, and be with the sinners and making my life look like that. God, I don't I don't want to, Lord God. God, I want to be planted by the river. If that's the cry of your heart, God, plant me by the river. God calls me to grow by the river, Lord. If that's a cry of your heart this morning, then come to the altar and let the Lord wash over you this morning as we worship him.